there's been a couple times that um, I've been on and I have uh, been doing the domes uh, in different uh, shapes. And uh, I do want to bring attention to isomalt. Uh, sometimes you'll hear me say the word sugar. Well, where I was trained, isomalt uh, was also called sugar. So I will make that error. But when I'm working with isomalt, um, it is isomalt. Uh, the other thing I want to talk to you about is that you'll go on to a lot of the tutorials on YouTube and you'll find chefs that are making a syrup and it's made from granulated sugar and uh, cornstarch and uh, water. And they will end up making a dome out of that if you watch any of the competitions and things like that. They're not necessarily telling you it's isomalt. Uh, usually they are making it from that. I don't recommend it. Uh, the reason I don't recommend it is that it takes on a lot of moisture and your dome can fall before you get it to your cake designing. Isomalt is where to go. Um, with making domes because it stays drier and does not take on the moisture and it can be sprayed with the PME gel. So I just wanted to bring that to everybody's attention because I've been on other um, demos and noticed that people have been watching that on uh, YouTube and it's not, they're not using isomalt. I'm using isomalt, even if I'm talking to you tonight and I make the mistake I call it sugar because it is a sugar substitute and I was trained that way. <laughs> Respect your sugar. Okay. Well, so, years ago, I mean, not even that long because I remember my daughter Jackie, when she was about eight, she competed in um, Sydney, I think was, I don't even know if she had started up by then, um, mm -hmm. selling the isomalt um, tiles and, um, so Jackie had to make it with a lot of supervision because it was really it's dangerous to make it the old fashioned way. Um, and, you know, with the boiling of the isomalt, it was crazy what she had to do to do it. But um, these tiles, especially the semi tiles, were made to make your life a whole lot easier. Yes. Yeah, so. And also comment about um, this product. They had a product in, on the market. And, you know, I've been around over 30 some years playing with sugar, isomalt, different things. But it was they were called nibs. They didn't stay on the market very long. Uh, and the reason for it is that they did not work as well as this product. So I can't say, I can't say how much it has made my life so much easier. <laughs> and uh, working with young people and even adults. Uh, so yes, I would recommend this and the clear, the clearness of it. Tonight I'm going to fog it up a little bit, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do first is, um, you've all, I don't know whether everybody knows what a cello sheet is, but it comes on acetate and I use the clear, I'm going to be using the clear, but it comes in a white also, and you can have that printed. Um, these uh, images, um, icing images did this for me. I just went under their eye print, picked out all these numbers and sent them off to her staff and they printed them up for me and sent them to me. And I appreciate that because of my tech non-technical brain. And like Deborah has taught me that if I'm not using my printer all the time, then I'm going to have to clean it, I'm going to unclog it and do things. And you, one thing I can say about icing images is they will teach you that. Do you need it or do you not need it? And I love that. So um, I do not want you to ever buy a printer if you shouldn't have one. And I will tell you right. that. That's Many exactly people are right. And I did, and I'd hardly use mine. And I'm always, when I do have to use it, I have to call Deborah. You Help. just make me feel. <laughs> As you do that probably all the time. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So what I'm going to do is I have a, um, a um, image here, and I'm going to put the camera down, and I'm going to cut it. And uh, I'm doing my mise en place, which means prepare yourself before you uh, need to, like turn your oven on if you need to, or 
cut your images, uh, get your uh, bowl ready for the dome. And I already have my cookies baked and I already have them um, flooded. So it's kind of in the shape of an egg. It's supposed to be an egg. Looks like an egg. It is an egg. If it looks like an egg and it's shaped like an egg, it must be an egg. Here's one that's finished. That's so cool. Yes. And uh, I want to do this so that you can actually see. You can see the print now. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then it goes out and you put your little treats and things in. Also, you can make an Easter basket and put it in there and put your little inside of it. And this is edible grass and things that you can buy and then the little eggs that go along with it. So there's a lot of use for them other than putting them on top of the cake. So number one thing tonight is because I'm working with a metal uh, disc, I'm going to have to put gloves on. And I'm going to put the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. Is that close enough, you think, Deborah? Um, you're zooming in right now. That's really good right there, I think. Okay. So I have my disc. I'm going to set it on. This is my... Um, Fellow sheet down there, and I'm going to get my edi edible marker. I think you have these. Yep, I'll put the link up for everybody. Saved my life at the uh, retreat. <laughs> Gave me one. <laughs> so I'm going to mark it from the outside of the former. I just like to do that. You can also do it from the inside, but I like to do it from the outside. And I'm going to get my trusty scissors and cut that out. Now, I'm doing it from start to finish so that you see it done. Now, I don't like to put my fingers in the center there. So I'm just going to cut it on the line. Now, remember, while I'm doing this, it's still on the acetate, which is the backing for the uh, sheet. And I'm going to leave a little tab down at the bottom here. So I can cut it just like that. I'm going to set this aside and then I put it, uh, those in. I'll tell you what to do with all those later on if we have time. So I'm going to get my little mat here and my Sharpie. And I'm just going to Draw a little line right on there where I didn't cut. Now, if you get the sides of it mixed up and you can't tell which one is which, you just take a little water on your finger and then touch it. And you, if it gets sticky, which it did, then that's the side that you, that you have your image on. So then I'm just going to take my hand right here. You see how it peels up? I got a little nick here. I got a, I didn't cut through. You're using a pen blade too. Yes, I am. And you have those. So I'm just going to pull that off. And I like to keep the um, big side up. Um, I can't answer why. I just uh, remember when I was experimenting on these that it worked very nice. So I'm going to set that aside. And I have a Pyrex bowl. So I'm going to take some plastic wrap. It's a big box of plastic wrap. Can you tell? <laughs> And I, want, I like to wrap it twice, and it is recommended to wrap it twice, and not too tight, um, not too loose and not too tight. 
just a little tart. Just like that. Sticks in. What I like about the Pyrex bowl is that it does, um, the sides of it stick down nicely. Then I'm going to take another one and I'm going to wrap it over again. Set that aside. And so that's ready. Then I'm going to take my image that I've cut and I'm going to set it nicely in central. On, on that. Now, I don't work with gloves, but in this case, when you're using metal, metal is a conductor, and you should always put double gloves on, and sometimes triple. The reason for that is it can conduct through, and this is going to be hot. I'm going to heat it. Uh, the temperature that I use this is 115 degrees Celsius, which is 239 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's still very hot. It looks like um, when you pour it, it looks like it's in the honey stage, you know, when honey is poured. So I'm going to take a little um, of my oil here. I'm off camera, but just a little bit on, on some. Um, Does it matter what kind of oil? I've just got a little oil on a paper towel. And I'm just using a canola oil. I use canola or vegetable oil. Don't use any flavored oils. Unless you want to. But it goes right into your the taste of your cookie and everything. And I, um, when I was at the retreat, some ladies commented that I use more oil than what they used to use. And I said, that's okay, that's just me. Um, so then I put that aside and it's oiled and I'm gonna set this right on where I've cut the image. Now the so image, you're, on top, you're on top of the cell, cellophane, right? So I'm, on, yeah, on, on, I'm right on top of the cello sheet that I cut. Okay. And so that's on, on, on the wrap. Okay, so the cello sheet is now on the plastic wrap. You can see that okay, huh? Yes. Okay. That's what I thought I was saying. I'll be right back. I'm just going to the microwave to get the sugar. All right. I mean, While she's doing that, we need two more votes. Um, we would like Dave to join us live and take direction from Jesse in a few weeks. We need two more votes. There are two more guys. If you haven't voted, just put it right up there. <laughs> it's a Davathon. You know, we'll have call centers open shortly to take your calls. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I heard that giggle, Dave. <laughs> Just two more votes. Sandra, you came on. I know you haven't voted. Taisha, you haven't voted. We just need two. Yes, Daves. Two yes, Daves. And has everybody um, shared the video or the live yet? See how nice and clear that is. Wait, you can't even talk no. I'm just moving that around. It already has boiled and settled, and it's at 125. And it won't be long, and it'll be down to about 115. I like to put it on um, the sugar or the isomalt. You see, I put it on a towel because I don't want the bottom to cool faster than the whole um, dish of um, isomalt. So if you can see that, see it's kind of like honey and nice and clear. So I'll check the temperature again. It's still a little too hot. Now, when I was at the retreat, I poured these and um, they, they popped at the very end. Um, and the reason they did, I was in a hurry and you should not be in a hurry with isomal or any sugar because um, you can also get burnt. By the way, we have 11 votes now. We have 11 votes. Mm -hmm. 
That's that, that's a misconduct. Sorry. Misconduct. What does that mean? That means you got to start all over again. That you know that that they they say misconducts in hockey in Canada. So he's using that term. Ah, well, we're in America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it counts. Even if the chads are hanging, it counts. <laughs> hey, it's cooling. Mm -hmm. It just takes a few minutes. They'll be down. I love nice. my Canadian friends. They keep me laughing. I watched Heather on Sunday. Yeah. She's amazing. She had us all laughing. She, she so this is, I mean, this is ready. So I think because this is long and um, in, in this shape, I'm not going to do the dollar thing. I'm going to pour this down here. Set that out of my way. Then very gently, I'm going to press down on this. So as you're pressing down, it's creating air in there. Is that what it's doing? Yeah, it's ballooning. That's what I thought. I can kind of see it. it it's hard. You can see it, the, the color change on it almost because of the positioning. Yeah, so I'm going to put in here a little extra. I'm going to pour a little extra in here. I like the sides to be uh, like in a solid. So when you're doing this, you may have to move it side to side. Just be my luck. I just I make all these that so many times that it wouldn't that it won't come out. <laughs> I move I move the uh, the steel metal. So you have to move it around sometimes. You have to hold your mouth in a certain position. And this is going to be a little thicker than the others, but it's still draining and it's still hot. And it isn't doming very well because I put two loads on it, but it'll be fine. Okay, so I'm going to get my assistant director here to come and hold this fan over top of this before this pops on me, and I think it's going to because I put He's practicing right. live. Around this way. This way? Right. Yeah. That's a really good job, Dave. You need to go on live. Yeah, see? That's all you're going to see when I do go on live. <laughs> a fan? <laughs> well, that means he's going to do it. I know. So, you know, it's always really great to do uh, make an error on uh, when you're doing a live for everybody to see. Because <laughs> I, I made an error here and I moved the metal disc as we were pouring. But you get the idea. It domes up. It's got a small dome on it and it needs to cool. Well, Heather's calling you Super Dave. Super Dave. Stacy says you have hands for TV, Dave. Yeah, so you can see his fingernails and everything. Yeah, they're much nicer than mine. I'll get them all done up for you. <laughs> With pink? Any color you want. Okay, so okay. this is <laughs> you can take this away. Now, I'm going to tell you something that just happened here. It deflated itself. So, but I don't believe in, in not doing it uh, for you. So if we've got time, I'm going to do it again because um, if you put that in just for 30 seconds. What caused but, uh, that to happen? I'll show you this because everybody should, should see it. Okay. No, I think it's great when things don't go well because it no, I see what happened yeah. and yes. you don't know what happened then. Well, I know what happened. Um, I know. You know. <laughs> I popped it. 
And, but it's still good. I want to do this because everybody will want to know, well, now what do I do with my sugar? It's all trapped in there and it's got this and it's got that. That's a good thing because um, it's inside this. I'm going to cool it off. And you notice the cello sheet is right there. So it's domed, but it's domed in the opposite direction. You see? Okay. It's domed on the cello sheet rather than onto the isomalt. So what I'm going to do is go like this because it's still warm. And I'm going to get this silicone right here. And I'm going to stretch it. So is there a problem with it going the other way or can it not be used? Yes, I, I'm using it right now. See, I'm making a dome. If, from, you kept, if you kept it in the opposite direction and continued that. Yes, the cello sheet is on the back and this is the, this is the isomalt. Mm -hmm. And because it's still warmth in it and I took it off because I knew it had flattened so now what I'm doing is that I'm forming the dome. So even if it pops, even if it's um, not looking right to you, you can still dome it. Now right here, I, I have the cello sheet and I trim that off and then this still could go on a cookie and we can still use it. Now, if you didn't want to use it and you wanted to use this and you can crack this, Put it into your silicone and you can mix it all together. It becomes multicolors and you can use it inside of the, for bases for anything. So if everybody understood what I was just saying. Gotcha. So you can use it as a filler. You can mix it all together, even though the cellar is in there and use it yeah. as kind of filler. Isomer. Right. It just becomes colors. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut another image. Let me set this over here. Sorry about that, but that happens. No, it's fine. This is good because this is, you know, if you don't yeah. know and you do it, then you're wondering what you did wrong, you know. Well, it, it can pop. Yeah. And... Um, it's only because it had a nice dome on it until I poured the second um, uh, sugar. Well, this is a different image, but we're going to use this. This is one of your eye designs. It's got little eggs on it and little um, clouds. You might have to warm That's that the up. The one with the duckies on the green, I think, correct? On right the grass. In. Duckies yeah. on the grass? Got grass. Okay, so we just mark this off. We're doing now? No, just wait a couple minutes. So when you're marking this, if you got the wrong side to it, it won't mark because it's a cello, it's a acetate sheet. So that's what I just did. I turned it around. Just cut that off. Save your scraps because I just melt them down in, in uh, leftover sugar and they become colors. Not yet, Dave. You don't, have to, you, don't, you don't have to heat it too much. When you're casting, this is also called casting. Uh, when you're casting your isomalt, if it's already been melted, you don't have to really bring it back to a boil you can um, just bring it back to the, to the consistency that you need it for. So 
So then we're just going to trim this off again. And I've got gloves on and I'm not used to it, so bear with me <laughs> when I'm cutting this. All right, so um, jo Jody, hi Jody, uh, says, have you tried this with uh, press and seal instead of saran wrap? I, I tried it with all and press and seal, I don't recommend you use that because what happens is it'll tighten up too much and you'll do a lot of popping. It uh, has to have some give so that the air can pop through it. And even, um, even uh, the cheapest wrap works. Gotcha. But this, the one that has the seal on it, um, it didn't work for me. It became too tight. Yeah, I think it's probably too thick, and it probably has other stuff in it. Yes, and this has nothing good. So we're just wrapping this back up again with a little tightness. I'm just going to test the temperature of the sugar, because it might still be okay. Okay, so that's set up. And we're going to take our little image here. Set it central. This has some little black dots in it too, which is okay. That's the way it's supposed to be. That's from the print. See the purple ones. I don't see the black ones. I see the little, I don't know what those were. I don't remember on the design. I should look that up. They're little, um, they're little green clouds, little chicks. They're little yellow chicks and um, little eggs. Just to get a little more oil here. Does anybody have questions about eye designs and what that is? And I will put a link to it as well. Right now, I'm just looking for the actual number that she's using right now because it's really cute. It is cute. So I'm going to set that down there. Okay. It's pattern 288. Is it? Yes, it is. So I'm just going to warm this up a little bit more. Probably past what we need, but it's better to have a little more than less. So we go through the same process, nice and clear. What time do we have? We good? We have 12.39. I'm kidding. 7.43. You're doing great. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Well. Does it confuse you? It just takes a few minutes. Like You're I'm fine. Gonna... Don't rush it. Yeah, I was rushing it. So don't rush don't it. Rush it. Don't rush it. Don't rush it. Don't rush it. <laughs> So I was wondering what color, I see that um, Brooke, she has pink hair. I noticed Heather has um, purple. purple. Yes. And I was wondering, are you, are you going for a color? Me? No, but I'm trying to talk my mother into doing it. She's, she's going to be 89 in a couple of weeks. And I'm trying to, you know, she lives in an assisted living home. And mm -hmm. I just want her to go on that edge and just do a streak of purple. Oh, just that'd to be get awesome. Talking about it in the in in the um, residence, it would be hilarious because yeah. you know they would, <laughs> and it would look good. 
Not too much. Oh, yeah. I think people will actually love it. She'll be the talk of the of the of the um, wing, the wing where she lives. Oh yeah. <laughs> She'll be the Did you see June? Did you see June's hair? She's got purple in it. I think it'd be hilarious. What's her What's her name? June. Like June. Month. I like that. <laughs> so we've got about one seventeen. That's a nifty little thermometer. One fourteen. So let's try this out again. Be very gentle. See, it pours like honey. My luck, I put a color in it and it'll go in the opposite direction. And then you just press down on it gently, gently, gently. That's the dome. That's the dome. Dum, da, da, dum. Dum, dum. <laughs> Becky just arrived. She was late. We were talking about her and now she doesn't know. You weren't there to defend yourself, Becky. <laughs> so, any questions? This is where it's hot on your fingers. Who has questions out there? Even if they're not related to what she's doing. Oh, by the way, we have the votes for Dave. He will be coming live in a few weeks. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so who's coming to what shows out there? What do you want Dave to show? Um, I don't know. You have to come up with a curriculum for him. You're a teacher. I can. Tell him how to do it. See, Dave, there's actually a purpose for it because some people are afraid to do things um, and they don't think they can. And they have a lot of experience in dealing with the, this type of artistry, but they're just afraid. So They're just afraid of the camera. No, they're not. They're afraid to try things. Well, you know, yeah. They don't take things out of their boxes or containers and they sit in their cabinet. So. Well, um, Bernice, uh, Bernice doesn't want to know what size that egg cutter is. That, this, uh, well, the first one I had, I bent it myself. It was a round one, six inch. This one is a larger because we, the smaller ones, I'm going to pour a little substantial part right here. Just a little tad. Right there. I like to have the edges I like um, a rim around the edges. You'll see the other domes that I've done. And uh, I like the feet. Sure. We're going to get my assistant director here. Just hold it up. up. Star of the next five with Jesse. There we go. So they have to Kat said that she does that. She buys stuff and she doesn't do anything with it because she's afraid to try. And so really? when somebody that doesn't have experience tries it, then it gives them confidence. Yes. That's really, really funny. So you use your little dredging tool, not your finger, and you test it, your sugar. And if it's still soft, you don't move it. Okay, we're gonna come down. We're gonna come down real close. We got a nice dome. So, like, if you have edging left with your cello sheet, you just take your scissors and trim it off because we're gonna decorate a cookie in a, in a few minutes, and I'm gonna pipe some uh, of the royal icing and show you um, how you can just bring it all together. The cello sheet is edible and it tastes very, very good with royal icing. Uh, the same, uh, if people are talking, I think you asked me a question, am I getting any bubbles on my, uh, with my cello sheet? And I'm not, 
when I put it on a buttercream or I put it on fondant. Um, <clears throat> the only thing I can think about is that if somebody was getting bubbles, it would be that they have let it sit out uh, and your buttercream or whatever it was they were putting it on was room temperature. When you apply the cello sheet to buttercream, you should have smoothed your cake and then put the cello sheet on while it's cold. And you may see some bubbles um, while you do that. You just take your um, little paddles that you do with smoothing and smooth over it and those will go away. Set it back in the refrigerator and you'll find they just disappear. Perfect. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna test this and um, I can still press in there. So right down here, right down here. Just right at the very end is a little warm because I second warmed it. <laughs> the other thing is that it's very difficult to make the very small domes. So what I do is I do the same thing as you saw when I pulled the last one, I pour the isomalt onto the image with the, with the um, metal image around it, wait until it's cool enough and pull it off, and then I form it into a dome on the smaller, very tiny ones. Okay, I think we got it here. Okay, so you see that I can touch it now and it's some uh, chefs uh, like to have it still warm around the outside of it. I just prefer that it be uh, locked up. So I'm going to pull that up just like that. And I'm going to take my plastic wrap. And I'm going to show you the dome. Ooh. I love it when it's live because it's really hard in a regular picture. Um, it's very, very hard for you to even understand it. Yeah. You know, people to understand uh, how the balloon effect comes from. Uh, now, the, the reason I'm using a large bowl is you have more ballooning. Uh, with a smaller um, egg ring. So I'm just going to set this down here in front of the fan and I'll show you what I mean. These are some of my rings and these are about the same size as the egg and what I do that if it's if I don't have the metal mold, what I do is I buy a cheap round one like this. Now, this is very heavy. Uh, this is one of my um, entremet rings. And I squish it to the, and pull it and heat it to the, to the mold that I want if I don't have it. This I bought, and it's very tinny, so it can break your mold. This is one that I had. It's just an older ring that I had, and it was perfectly round. And I just took it and I bent it. Uh, after I heat it, and uh -huh. it, it gave me the egg shape. Gotcha. Uh -huh. um, and they're just, they're, they're ones that I would just use up. Now for a dome this size, you need a bowl this size. Okay? Now, for a bowl this size, you would need to have only this size. Gotcha. So you see the difference on the sides? So you'd wrap this twice and you'd, you would um, oil the sides and you see the heavier part on there? That's the side that I use down onto the plastic wrap. because this is very sharp edge, very sharp and can cut through. So we set that isomalt out of the way. And this has some of the cello sheet 
Well, this is really pretty good because I, I wanted to show you this and I don't want to be perfect. <laughs> so you still have some cello sheet here and cello sheet here. And sometimes when I, I'm pressing down, because of the oil, you can move it. So yes, you should be uh, very uh, in between with the oil. You can move it. And sometimes if um, depending on the, mm -hmm. the amount that you're pouring, you might have some ends left. That's okay. Um, this is a cookie that I have uh, pre-made for you. And you see how pretty that is on there? Did you, use the, same, like, did you use the same cutter to make it? Yes. Okay. My, my cookies, um, possibly I didn't have them cold enough when I put them in the oven and they spread a little bit. It's the same cutter, but I wanted it to spread a little bit. And the reason for that is that I like to decorate around here or else I put more isomalt around there after I put my little eggs on there. Gotcha. Would you uh, warm this back up again? So we're going to warm that isomalt. So Becky wanted to clarify if she has a round opening of three and a half inches that she would want the isomalt to bulge out of, she would use a four to five inch cutter as a mold. Okay, what was that question again? Okay, so she has an opening of a three and a half inch, of the, the cutter has the opening of three and a half inch that she would want the image, the isomalt to bulge out of. Would she use a four to five inch cutter as a mold? Okay. Um, this is three inches right here. Okay. Okay. So that in, is that mean that her cutter internally is three inches? Yeah, three and a half inches. And so okay. then if it's the other way, three and a half inches. So right? so the, the the opening is three and a half inch. Okay. So that three and a half inch would take a bowl roughly to this. And what I do is I cut the image on the outside of the cutter. Is that like it, question, Becky? But that doesn't mean you can't cut it on the inside of the cutter. Uh, what you do is you test it first for yourself, which, uh, which side you like it because Sometimes when you're cutting it on the inside of the cutter and you put the um, uh, isomalt down while it's in the ring on, on your uh, bowl, that the ends of the cello sheet can curl up. So I like it cut on the outside so that my image is sitting on all the edges of the cello sheet. And then if I need to, and there's some left over, I just use my scissors and trim it if I want to. In this case, I'm not going to because I'm going to get my, my uh, royal icing and I'm going to pipe this. I'm going to put some little uh, chocolate eggs in here that I did not make. <laughs> but they're the best ones ever. Unless they are so good. <laughs> And so in order for me to know that there's room enough in here, I just set my little fellows in here and or your treats, whatever you're treating, and it fits perfectly. Okay. I so, like that it fits the bigger items, you know, not like just sprinkles. Yes, we, we can do the sprinkling on something else, but we don't need to sprinkle. So I'm just going to take my my you get these from icing images and no. from uh, Simi. You get those from Simi, but not from me. Oh, you don't have any? Okay, I'm no. sorry. It's okay. I'm just going to take a little isomalt and set it on there. And Could you leave them loose if you wanted to? Pardon? Could you leave them loose if you wanted to? Yes. 
I just didn't want to do that in front of you in case I might break them. That's true. Yes, you can use, you can leave them loose. It works just fine. And then if you wanted to, you see, you can take Isomo and go all the way around the edge here or on the edge of this and stick it. And that's what I'm going to do. All right. I'm not going to do the sticking of the whole thing. I'm just going to go around here, put a little here, like Sydney does. Just a little here, a little there. A little bit of here, a little bit of there. Come on, Dave, sing with me. Dave, Dave's a good singer. He used to really? be in a gospel group. Yep. Cool. He used to sing in the group in the church. Okay, so see how quickly that's put together? Now I'm gonna go and get my um, piping bag, but before I'm gonna let that set for a minute. This is one I did uh, on a cookie. See, it's a cookie. And then I put a stick on it. And this is was for Valentine's Day. And then I put all these nice little sparkly things. You get these from the, the Sweet Chalet. And um, because I, when I attached this to this, and you're going to so, I'll show you this, you're going to, I leave a little opening up there. That doesn't bother me because then I'm going to put some more isomalt on it after I put all the little sparklies on the inside of that. This is another They're one lovely. for Valentine's Day. And this is your cello sheet. Um, dropped onto okay so this Shoot. is royal that i colored and then i cut the image of the cello sheet and um then i dropped isomalt on it with my heart cookie cutter and then i pulled it off and while it was still warm i formed it Similar to this one that I did that didn't turn out, or I, I made it okay because it was still warm. So this was still warm. So I dropped it on there, and underneath it was another cookie, and I piped it. This one here, this I wanted to show you this, Debbie, about the question: Does it bubble? This went right onto royal icing that had just been flooded, and it's gotcha. set up. So it did. It didn't bubble. I love the way that it's smaller than the cookie, so you decorate it around that edge. It looks, it reminds me of those really frilly chocolate candy. Oh, look at the royal uh, chocolate candy boxes they used to have. They're now they're just cardboard. Um, yes, but they were really pretty. Okay, so. I'm just getting my white icing. Hi. Hey, Laura, how are you, sweetie? Sorry, my clock, I don't know if you can hear that. My watch keeps telling me what time it is for some reason. <laughs> Just randomly does that. Okay, so we, we want to finish this up. It's got our little treats in there and say it's for Easter. So I'm just going to do this quickly. Some piping around the edging here. I know this isn't. I really don't like it not to be finished. <laughs> yeah. Morning, Kate. We had a time change. <laughs> yeah. Kate's late because we had the time change and she oh did not. <laughs> so this is just a shell border. Uh oh, Laura, what did you brag about today? And so this will harden up. It is flavored. It, I do recommend that you flavor your royal ice cream. Okay. And so there you have it. That's so cute. I love that. 
Are you able to show us the side of it? Yeah. Like that angle? You can see how high it comes up. Yep. And you can make them higher. That's my metal yeah. hand. I'm not nervous. That's my hand has been strained. Well, we can't have okay. you hands. I strained my hand. Don't do that. Now, what if you did? You just wanted to do something to this here, and you're probably going to say, "Oh, you're going to spoil that." What is that? So you can put all your little funny things in here. I could see my husband with that bowl and a spoon. Yeah. <laughs> Look at. See all those nice little sparkies. Now, do how are people eat that? Well, the way that. If you have young people, they love to break things. Okay. Me too. So, yeah. So basically what you do, well, that's not dry, so I'm going to leave that there. Here's another one. Okay. And uh -huh. you want to see the difference on the dome in this one. See? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So okay, say see we got it all decorated up and it's all in our little our um, Easter basket waiting for the kids or the young people or adults. And I didn't make these, I bought them at the store. Just so I can for me. For me. And then that other one would be in the basket. And so the other thing, before we get any farther, I do have to tell you about domes. Uh, one more thing about a dome before we crack this thing. They go on the side of a cake beautifully. You don't have to put them all on the top. You can. Now, we've got two pieces done from exactly the same. You put a little isomalt all around there. You attach them together. Oh, and wow. You, and you can, before that, you fill one of them with whatever you want. And you can put a stick right through here. Yeah. You set it on the top of your cake. And... You have all, you know, when you do a dome, like a regular round dome, that's what you use these for. You don't just go oh, lay it over top. You can make the whole image on top with flowers on it, all kinds of stuff, because it's got that wonderful isomalt and that wonderful sheet on the inside. I'll tell yeah. you what the sheet on the inside does. Look at that. See how strong that is? Wow. It strengthens it so I can go bang, 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 bang with it. And I'm not breaking it. The reason that's I, when, when you asked me to test these sheets, that's what I did. I dropped them on the floor. <laughs> After I, <laughs> seriously, and it didn't break. So it gave it strength, gave the isomalt strength. And so like when you're decorating the top of a cake, and you want all that strength and that beauty. It's still wonderful to eat. You can still do all that kind of stuff, but it's got extra strength because that cello sheet is inside of it. Wow. So I'm wondering now, like when you guys make these big old cakes and you need to put things, um, I guess have a base, even something like that could be a base because the isomal has more strength to it. Does it, well, does it well, um, fog as much? No, I sprayed it. You spray it. Okay, so just the same as any other. The, yes, the spray it. Did you know, make it. The me, and it doesn't fog. Um, did you ever see the cake stand that I made out with the with the cello sheets inside it? I made a cake stand. It's out in my lab. My dear. Anyway, this is a small one. This is a small dome. All I did was put the image down put the cello sheet underneath it, pour uh, isomalt over top of it. Then while it was still warm, I pulled it out like with the big one and I formed it 
and now it's formed so it goes right over top of that and you could put sparkles or whatever and finish it off or not finish it off just put a stick on the end of it and you've got a lollipop cookie now you want to see this broken so let's say that's on a cookie right So it does break. <laughs> yeah, you can break it, but you notice I broke it. I broke it at the weak weak point. Yeah, no, I'm teasing. And you can still eat it. 